now I can tell by the sound of the vehicle when you go down by. And then the other thing is, you know, I'd like to feel comfortable that my grandkids can go out and ride their bike to school. Mm -hmm. I don't feel comfortable. I'm nervous as hell if the boys ride their bikes to school because you don't know who's out there driving either drinking or on drugs or both. And it's really, really nerve wracking. The kids should be able to ride their bike and not with no fear of after hitting a ditch because of oncoming cars coming like hell. And, uh, and then my neighbors down the road mm -hmm. are another situation which we're all familiar with the black and blue crowd. Last night they had a big hoo, hoo ride down there because the, the boy that got killed out here a year ago was a year anniversary. Mm -hmm. So I had just come back from the school. I literally had to stop because there was actually a truck on the town pavement burning the shit out of the road. You mm -hmm. couldn't see. I had to stop until they got done doing what they were doing so I could get by. Uh, that's, a big, <clears throat> that's a big problem. I feel like if you damage somebody's property, you should be responsible for it. That, that bunch down there does it constantly. They're constantly tearing the goddamn road up, which is town property, and nothing's being done about it. Mm -hmm. And my question is, you guys, I know you guys are aware of this situation, but do you have some sort of a plan? Because obviously the plan that you got now is not working. Well, yeah, in all honesty, no. I mean, we don't have a solution. We've been discussing law enforcement, obviously, even before, you know, what happened last June. You know, it's been a pretty, it was a pretty regular item on our agenda. And unfortunately, we're very short of solutions. I mean, and I know, and I understand, I know, I know what you're speaking it's not, about it's not getting any better i, I i'm way. aware of that but we just well, something we we uh, we constantly ask 
Knox County for more coverage. They tell us they don't have the manpower. Uh, we we hear you and we agree with you. I know that people drive, I know people drive way too fast past your house. So not just past your house, but a lot of other places too. And I also know because I saw on social media last night, all of the uh, burning rubber that was occurring well, right next door to you. And they've got, they've got the audacity to put it on Facebook. So well, say, so see what I'm doing. See that might I'm not be audacity. That might be foolish, you know. Well, I think it's you know, foolish. But, you know, we, you know, perhaps now that we do have such a public record of it, we can pursue at least that aspect about property damage to the road, perhaps. I'm not, I can't, I'm not pointing it right now. I'm spitballing. All there's no speed limit sign. I There is. And the state sets, you know, basic, even if a speed limit sign doesn't exist. Well, they, it's they not really no attention to it anyway. Well, so, I mean, uh, okay. but, you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty even keel mm -hmm. man. You know, I can get a little rag going mm -hmm. when the situation occurs. And I'm really, I'm really not a, opposed to defusing the situation mm -hmm. if it is involved in the situation at my house. And I know that if I call the law, nothing's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go that route. Yeah. That's why I'm here asking. For assistance here. But, you know, for whatever reason, if something happens, then I don't have a problem defusing okay. the situation. Well, I, at all, at all. If the laws, I mean, if we got no police protection, I'm going to protect my family. And there's nobody you can call or nobody that'll come. I'm going to take care of the situation. I hope it don't come to that because I don't want to get a pile of shit over. But I'm not saying that's off the table. All right, well, thank you. And we will discuss this, you know, later on for, you know, under the board of members, for example, later on tonight. But yeah, we will discuss this, you know, further. Thank you. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, there was a vehicle okay. went down, down my road, no doors on. An old truck, an old beat up truck, loud exhaust, no, you know, it ain't inspectable or registered. It's not okay. fair. It's not fair for the people that tried trying to. All right, I, under, I understand, law. but I, you know, I think. Well, know. no, I'm trying to get my point across. Well, and, I uh, think you, you know, you have given us, you know, a lot of information. Thank you. Uh, Ellen. I just wanted to say I was thinking I was here about two years ago when Martha Conway had the same complaint in front of Vinyl Haven Fuel. And nothing ever was done about it. And I thought this was an issue when the, when the new cop was hired, that this was somehow going to be addressed. What's happened with that? Yeah. It's been addressed by the new cop. The trouble is the new cop is only here half a week. So they know when he's not here? Yeah. Well, well, it's well, it's it's the entire park of the bedroom would say, go for it, you got three days. If we had someone here seven days a week, I think the issue would be. Listen, yeah, you, you likely won't ever eliminate such a problem, but you could certainly Less eliminate it. You know, and we've been talking a, about alternatives yeah. for uh, a long, for years and years and years. And, and one of the alternatives has been uh, our own private police force, but that has proved to be so expensive that it, it didn't seem worth uh, presenting it to the town. It was so expensive. And the best option is to get full coverage from North County, but we have not been able to do that yet. And having our own police force would also run the same personnel issues that Knox County is seeing. Police departments across the country are having a very difficult time hiring. You know, the past year has been pretty rough. And it'd be, it was going on before that, too, for that matter. But anybody else? I would know, you know, I'm just going to go on a whim here. I'm assuming what we are here about broadband. It is an agenda item and we will be just the same. Where, pardon me, do you want comments now during uh, speakers from the floor on broadband well, or are you going to allow us to speak? On oh, I, I, will, uh, I, will, I will allow you to speak on the broadband, come on the broadband section. No, I'm not going to put a gag rule on the floor. Just, just <laughs> making sure we didn't miss an opportunity. No. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else? 
Okay, uh, we'll go on to committee and department reports and appointments. Uh, planning and community development, downtown project outreach. Thanks, guys. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen, Andy. <clears throat> Should be able to now. Okay. Thank you. So just an update. Um, the the bottom bullet point is where I sh where I should be at. Um, I keep promising a, a summary for you guys to review before um, we publicize that, but um, just that's still forthcoming, but just an update on where we're at with our funding and the scope of the project. So um, I think since the last time we um, had an update, um, we submitted it, we submitted another um, congressional, uh, well, we submitted a congressional um, earmark. So the CDS congressionally directed spending um, also for 1.2 million. So the community projects funding and the con congressionally directed spending are those are the two earmarks. So the first one community projects is through Pingree's office and the CDS is through King's office. And um, so we'll, we'll just keep our fingers crossed on, on those funds. Um, EDA is still outstanding, but we did um, uh, respond to some inquiries that they had about our proposal. So that's still outstanding for around 1.9. And then we also still have our NBRC application out there for um, a million. So I just wanted to show the budget as it stands um, now and what the infrastructure projects look like um, with EDA funding, which is, I would say at this point, the most the most promising, or at least the one that we'll hear about uh, one way or the other first. So we're at um, three point um, about three point eight million, and this would be um, EDA's match would um, match what we have um, by fifty percent. So this is what we could do um, for a project with the EDA funding. So the three components, um, upgrade the stormwater, replace um, the uh, sewer components and the water main and do the sidewalks and um, raising a, a slight raising of Main Street. So um, yeah, just wanted to keep this um, in the forefront and then we'll let you know as soon as we have a little bit more information on um, when, yeah, as soon as we hear about funding, um, but just in terms of outreach conversations, I know I've spoken with Eric and Sam about um, Brent and I um, speaking with the co-op board at their next board meeting. Um, we did have a, a, Will and I did a quick meeting um, with water district, um, so, excuse me, not water district, Pam, um, main water uh, folks yesterday, and we are going to loop Pam in and have um, another uh, water district meeting um, next month um, around the water main component. So the point is that we're starting to talk planning um, and we'll start to talk broader community outreach and stakeholder outreach so we can have these conversations with the stakeholders and then the broader community. So that is where that's at. Any questions? Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, um, Salt Island Broadband Task Force. So we received two letters, I believe, one from Janet and one from Dave. I put it right here. So obviously, we had a public hearing. Um, just last Thursday. Um, we have two letters here, one from Dave and one from the man, that both are asking that we do not disband the committee and that that's, I mean, that's Gates 
letter and then one from Janan um, stating that we should, uh, in light of what the survey results were for the broadband, you know, we should think about moving forward. And if not, you know, consider other options, but not, you know, disband the committee. So is there any reason, Andy, why we can't add the broadband right into the into this? That's okay. 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 Great. I, I, I'm not sure what the item under new business is, but so you know, to be perfectly frank, you know, yeah, the public hearing, you know, more than 90% of everyone who spoke was opposed to it and opposed to it, you know, very forcefully, in my opinion. And, you know, I think it's probably time that we think about moving on, you know, where, you know, we can't continue to spend a lot of staff time on a project that, you know, the community, from many indications I can see, are not that interested in. I don't know if I agree, Janan, that it is a vocal minority. I mean, my, I've even spoken with several people who originally voted yes on the survey and later changed their mind. You know, they, um, they began thinking about the risks that the town would take by only so much capital, you know. But I'm gonna ask the rest of the board now to say what they think. I agree with you, Eric. Um, well, we, you know, from the hearing of the other night, it seemed there are many concerns. I think we really need to be careful moving forward because we do have an awful lot of projects that are coming up that are going to be we need to do um, transfer station, just one of them. Um, we've got a lot of money going out, capital mm -hmm. projects that we're paying for. We've got road repair, and it's not that I disagree that we don't, that people don't want it or need the broadband because I understand a lot of people do work and they need to have that type of um, power or whatever you want to call it, internet speed to do that work. But in, in my mind, I don't feel that it would be right to move forward at this time. I I really think the we've got an awful lot on our plate, and I think we need to be careful. I agree with what you guys said. So, with that in mind, Bill and Donna, you still haven't said anything, but uh, but uh. With that in mind, you know, that means that, you know, we need to make a decision about, you know, both we have, we have a town official town committee one and the town committee that, you know, will demand if it remains a committee will demand a lot of staff time. So we, you know, and if the community support for this project is not there, then it's also not responsible in my mind in the upcoming year to spend staff time on a committee that, you know, is proposing a project that the community doesn't, you know, have an interest in right now. You know, I so, you know, I'm, you know, I think if the committee is going to exist, then it needs staff time. Otherwise it's, you know, we're, for a long time, we had a lot of committees that never had staffing, you know, from town government side. And it meant that, you know, they were oftentimes stuck in the mud. You know, they needed some professional help. So that's what we, you know, over the past couple of years, like Gabe and Andy and Matt, for that matter, sorry, you know, uh, you know, spending time with the broadband committee, helping them move forward. If the community is not interested in this proposal, then I think, it, you know, repeating myself, it would be irresponsible to continue, continue spending staff time when we have so many other capital projects you know, coming up that they need to spend time on. You can free up that time. With, you know, all those things are going to increase taxes too, right? That was the main message from that meeting. They don't want taxes to go. Nobody wants their taxes to go up. So how are we going to invest in those other things? I'm, I'm not saying I, that we should 
disbanded that we should not. Well, the committee can <clears throat> still be a committee. It's just that they wouldn't have the staff, the, hours. The staff yeah. hours. You know, the so Janan, do you agree with that assessment? I mean, you could still have your. You know, and I, I would also like to, you know, thank the broadband committee. You know, I know that what they're hearing, what they heard on Thursday night and what they're hearing tonight is not what they want to hear. But, you know, and DW and I both, you know, became members of that committee late, but much later on in the process. And for that matter, I was not a very active member on the committee. You know, I had enough, you know, I had other time commitments, unfortunately. But, you know, thank you for the work you did over the past several years. You know, you showed commitment to a project and you researched it well. And, but at this point in time, you know, I think we've reached a dead end. So uh, Banner, I saw your hand first and then Dan. Um, personally, I'm in favor of the idea of the island having local control over this kind of thing. But that being said, um, I I do understand you setting it aside, wanting to set it aside because of the impracticality, financial or political. But uh, I think a lot's changing in this world as far as broadband goes. And so I think there's a decent chance that a year from now, we may be back looking for a solution again. Uh, or, or, and opinions may change over the course of the year, just because it's a, uh, if the island sees money unavailable, money that's being thrown at this subject, the town's not able to get for some reason, the town may change its mind. So if there's a way of tabling it, as opposed to disbanding the committee, uh, so that it might be able to be revived if things change, uh, might be a good idea. Uh, I stand first and then Owen. I know I'm sorry, and I'm really sorry. Thank you. Your side. Eric, I put my comments in writing and asked that they do be entered into the record as part of the minutes. Yeah, please, everybody. So, uh, Dan, would you like to read this? Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'll summarize it. Oh, yeah, please. Uh, I do rise in opposition as perhaps one of the vocal minority. Uh, and my three bylines for tonight is the buggy, buggy whip factory, tax policy impacts, and the role of local government. Uh, and as I said during the public hearing, um, the Apple iPhone was invented 16 years ago. How much has worldwide communications changed in that 16 years? And I have a concern about if we stay with fiber, that we're going to be equally ellipsed. At the same time, I recognize the acute need for broadband in an isolated rural community. It's not just Maine, it's Maryland, it's Montana, it's lots of places. Um, I'm an advocate of Starlink because I believe a lower orbit space-based system has very, very strong appeal and will do nothing but continue to get better. Can I tell you what the price is as Andrew and I discussed earlier today? No. Do I suspect it will be significantly less than a $5 million bond indebtedness by the town? Yes. So Eric, to your question of a moment ago, I actually wouldn't favor disbanding your committee. I'd simply say that they've heard that people aren't interested in the option that they've arrived at, despite their great research. And therefore, what are the other options as technology presents itself that as a town, you have an ability better than we as individuals might have to order up alternative measures. I personally have already put in Starlink as a beta subscriber. I think my set's going to show up sometime in September, uh, maybe earlier. In the sheet I passed out, the very end of the Starlink sheet is the current map of service around the country. There's already a county in Maine that is subscribing. We should be part of that effort. And as I commented during the public hearing, 
recognizing we will have residents who will not be able or wish to put the antenna up themselves. There's a job creation opportunity for the town or for a company in the town to start setting these things up, caring for them and maintaining them for citizens who can't do it themselves. But the costs we're talking about here, even if you take a $500 antenna, add a $300 install charge, you do the whole island for under a million versus the 5 million that's being suggested for fiber to the home. So I would close by saying, I'd rather not see this invest in the Buggy Rick factory. I'm interested in our still progressing with broadband. Uh, and then as my closing comment is, if we're spending this kind of money, what are the other alternatives for housing, roads, infrastructure that we should pay attention to first, please? Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, Jack. No, I'm sorry, Jennifer. And then Jack. Oh, yeah. um, I'm not quite sure what happened. Um, we did a survey, and the results of that survey were very favorable. And then we had a meeting, which involved fewer people, and the results of that meeting were not very favorable. So we've kind of had one hit and one miss. Um, it seems to make sense to me, since we've come six years this far, to hold the referendum and find out where people really stand, because the survey says people want it, and the meeting the other night said people don't want it. If we do the referendum, then we at least give more people a chance to say whether they do or don't want it. Uh, Jack, and then Mark. Yeah, I'm concerned, as, as other people have mentioned here, that the debt service that the town is up against and the ongoing projects that we have, even back when I was on the board, we started to do the side rock project and the Main Street project. And, and so far, we haven't really gotten an awful lot of funding for that. And with this broadband, with the amount of money that this is going to cost the town, if this was a viable thing, there would be a private company offering the service. I mean, it, it, it would be so expensive to maintain for the few people that it would benefit. I mean, we already have broadband. And a lot of it is how, how big a package you buy from, from wherever, whether it's a consolidated or spectrum. I mean, there's all kinds of packages. So I feel that the town really shouldn't even be involved in, in owning such a business. But that's what it is, a business. We are a town. That there's a difference between the two. So I, I feel that this is way off the map. Uh, my name is Mark Tillette, and I'm one of the people that Pam highlighted that responded positively in the uh, survey. And then listening to the, the arguments uh, against this, I'd be one of the people who have changed my mind. And I think that uh, you know, my primary reason for, for doing this is, you know, my life got dramatically better. I live close enough to town, so I was able to do my work from here all last summer. Totally changed my life. Didn't have to go into New York City. It was awesome. I went from four megabits you know, per second to 400 with, with spectrum. And I wish that everybody, including my friend Banner, who lives down at the end of you know, a, a road that would be down a trunk line and so on, could, could do that. And I'm generally in favor of, uh, of the town you know, helping and providing something that's, that's a, a you know, critical piece of infrastructure uh, to, to everybody. So I like the idea of that, but it, I think you, uh, I think it's a step in the wrong direction uh, to tax everybody to, to do this. I think the technology will change. I think it's too much risk for the town. I think maintaining uh, lines like that is getting way out over our skis. I think there's higher uh, priorities elsewhere in um, you know upgrading the infrastructure and that's really the essence of what uh, the town should be doing uh, not to and also you'll end up you know if you did this you would end up getting more assholes just like me who buy out a, a you know a, a traditional island family and then burn their house down and build a McMansion and and you know start doing high-speed trading um, from here and you know 
you're looking at you're looking at you know a great example of what your next you know population would be if you go ahead and do this. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna. Hey, uh, hey, I'm. I'm a, I don't dare come. <laughs> hey, probably shouldn't. Hear. Probably shouldn't. Hear. Well, I do think you know, as far as owning utilities, the town we own the sewer, city sewer, and we don't have a lot of customers because we can't develop. You know, can't go out of town, and the people out of town do not pay for it. That's the. Um, customers pay for it. It's expensive. Um, needs we need already in the um, what eighteen years that it's been online. We, we're encountering maintenance issues that are going to cost a lot of money. And knowing, luckily, Main Water is um, our, our operation maintenance people, and they're awesome. They do great work, but I can't see how we could possibly maintain that part of infrastructure. I mean, knowing how hard it is for us to keep the sewer going, I couldn't imagine adding another huge um, utility onto the top of that. I'm really sorry. I mean, I know, and I do appreciate Jan, all the work you've done. It's, it's been great, and I agree, I don't, don't think you should just we should disband it just change the mm -hmm. way it's uh run. what what the objection is there to a referendum to going forward with a referendum what objection is there to that from those of you who spoke against it just the cost start with cost of the project or the cost i mean the referendum the referendum alone Cost of the referendum? Yeah, I asked how much a referendum at, on average cost, and, and I didn't get an answer. But it must be a semi-significant amount of money. And and the, and the um, yeah, I I appreciate the way um, you guys seem to be going in this, and I I'm glad you picked up on the vocal minority because I thought for a while after I read this memorandum I was at a different meeting. I just think a lot of weight is being given to the survey too. Um, survey is a saying that you can get the desired results from any survey if you ask the right questions. This survey had one question about broadband. The rest was pretty much who lives where and where do you vote? And would this fly if we put it out there? And it's a lot easier to check a box off on a survey and put it back in the mail than it is to get together. I mean, I, don't, I know I don't like being here. I didn't like being at the public hearing. It, it means a lot more for those people to go to the public hearing than it does a survey. And not only, you know, each individual that went, they also represent a family. So if you put this out to referendum, you're just going to waste time and money. It's going to go down. It's going to go down big. And I think if you do decide to put it out to referendum, that you should add a question to it. And that question should be to disband the um, committee if the referendum failed. Sam, so, there was a comment or a question on the chat there. Sam, I don't know if you want if you want to ask that out loud or not. Sorry, Andy, I wasn't planning on it. I thought you could maybe just read it, but just maybe I'm not thinking correctly in the process, but if it goes to a referendum vote, that means every registered voter gets to vote on this, right? But every registered voter isn't a taxpayer. So, I mean, it's very easy for someone who isn't, you know, gonna take the burden on their tax bill to vote, yes, I want this amazing broadband. So I feel like a referendum vote really is quite unfair in that respect, but maybe I'm misinterpreting the process. <clears throat> Uh, I didn't even pass in the questionnaire because I thought it was grossly inadequate and detailed. Um, and it wasn't, I, I couldn't make a decision because I didn't have enough detail. But what I'd like to say is broadband is going is uh, 
it'll be a, a cheaper to provide in the village than outside the village. That's why Spectrum provides 100 megabits in the village. And, and, and I thought about the uh, source system, which is just the village, 360 customers, the village. We pay solely for, the town doesn't pay for that, we pay for that <coughs> source system. It wouldn't be a down street if there wasn't a source system. But to have, to have uh, the people in the village subsidize people from out in the yonder, I think is unfair. One way to try to compensate that is to have the, the town take over the source system as part of the broadband project. And then we would be, then the, the people in the uh, hinterland would help to subsidize the source system. So the, so the people in the village would sub subsidize the broadband in the yonder, and the yonder would help subsidize the source system for the people in the town. That, I'd like to see that as part of. The, the Is it true that no taxpayer dollars go towards the sewer system? It's all paid for by user fees. Is well, technically, the the tax base helps pay for the twenty three hundred dollar a year license for a discharge to go elsewhere. And the, of course, these buildings have sewer fees assessed to them as users that would then get assessed through the general taxation. But other than that, there's no. Here, there's 600, there's 360 people. Yeah. 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 So what what Ann just said was that the tax pay, taxpayers pay pay for a sewer bill like this building twenty three hundred dollars just for permits. Yeah, I'm not saying it's, lot, it's not true. You no, said no okay. one outside the town does it pay. Well, I agree. Do, as a town, we do pay for it. Can I can I can I just repeat and say something? Just, get this off my chest. I'm glad we had the public hearing because I was the survey came out favorable and I was surprised. I wanted to hear from people because yes, survey you can fill it out. You can you can go online and fill out a bunch of them. So I didn't want to go just solely on that. So I'm glad people showed up. They made it very clear. They made some very good points. I I understand. I have reservations about too about the whole project as well. Even though I was in favor of it, it is a lot of money. I thought we could get some grant money, but that isn't guaranteed. So yes, committing all of that capital is a big risk, and I agree that we shouldn't be doing that right. It's just disheartening to hear that people think we have fast internet speed for everyone available to them when they don't. And those of us who do work from home, you're on your own. If you can't get fast internet speed, well, you either move away or you quit your job. And honestly, I feel like that's a really big slap in the face. To me personally, that's just my opinion. Um, and that's, that's it. That's all I have to say. Uh, Sean? I would like to ask the board to go ahead and vote um, to not put this for referendum and have it on the warrant and to take no further action on this. And let's move on. Gabe has her hand up. Uh, Gabe. Yeah, thanks. I, I'm wondering if the board has feedback on the memo that I submitted. I have feedback. Oh, she asked feedback. us to give them another year so they could explore non taxpayer alternatives. Well, I, I don't see the point. Nobody wants that. Yeah. It's, you know, uh, can I? These are not a priority for the town. I, I just, okay. The, the gate so, so the board identified economic development as a priority, and you said that broadband was the project you wanted to focus on because you felt broadband, universal broadband was an economic development solution for the island. So the solution that the committee came up with for universal broadband is not one that folks are in favor of, um, at least at least what we're hearing now, that that's not the right solution. There are many, many other solutions. as people in the meeting tonight have raised and people in the public hearing raised, explore other solutions, research more things. What we're talking about is no one wants to put tax dollars behind this. 
you've already approved, and I know the town hasn't voted on it, but the budget committee and the select board have already approved 90 to 100 hours of staff time going toward broadband in this coming year. So I, I, would, I would say out of the fact that, you know, if we, if we just let it go, we're basically saying that that's no longer, econo that, that economic development priority is no longer, um, is no longer a priority. And I don't, I don't believe that just so quickly because the wrong solution was presented that we should just ditch the whole idea of universal broadband. Spectrum, I mean, Spectrum has, you know, wants to talk to us about a proposal. Consolidated wants to talk to us about a proposal. Investors, private investors might want to form an LLC. I'm just thinking without facilitation of some solution, then nothing will happen unless, unless just some private investors come together and do it on their own, which is, which is possible. But just, just out of you know, the fact that the committee has done so much work, we've gotten grant funding, we did a study. I mean, there's just a lot that has gone behind this. And I'm, I, I'm all, all on board with this idea of like, this was the wrong solution. We should not use tax dollars to do this. But to just say we shouldn't do it at all in terms of we shouldn't at least explore and facilitate other options for the next year. I'm just, I just think that that would, I don't know, it just, it just doesn't feel right to me in terms of how can it no longer be a priority or part of the economic development solution for the island. Bill and then John. I think we've demonstrated that it's no longer a priority, but it certainly is still part of economic development and forecasting. And I can't imagine just abandoning all the work and investment that we've already put into this project without any, any further recourse. I'm, I'm all in favor of continuing the committee. We already, as Gabe said, have money and time budgeted. The notion that we wouldn't pursue alternatives, perhaps more innovative alternatives, less expensive alternatives, is um, certainly not something I'm in favor of. I'm in favor of letting the committee continue to do its work. John? Yeah, uh, hey, I showed up late. Uh, I got a comment on the irony of, it, of being made aware of this meeting via the internet in a place where now I have spectrum at 100 megabits per second, where seven years ago, I basically had dial-up and uh, that was earth. Yeah, and so I think that it, uh, high internet speeds are should be a main priority for the island. Um, and I can put it simply in that I think that we should reflect upon the average age in this room. Um, and who's being asked to make this decision here. And that I'm the youngest here at 27, rolling in. And I think that that says something, that there's a disconnect. And I think that 355 people responding positively to a survey is a hell of a lot more than 40, no matter how vocal they are. I wasn't at the meeting because I was out the hall setting traps with Zach Jones. So I know there's two people who would support this. I apologize, Zach, for speaking for you, but he is a taxpayer. And the, the predominant people who spoke on the survey in favor were taxpayers off island and not. And, you know, it, I don't see why we wouldn't want local control of a utility like this and why we wouldn't be willing to share the responsibility of this to come together as a community to support something like this in the name of future development. I think that seeing what the national priorities are and that Shelley has been trying to get broadband funding for the state in general. I think that we really could be making a decision by disbanding right now to really walk away when a lot could be made available to us. And I would hate to see that happen just because young people in this community don't feel comfortable coming forward or don't feel invested enough in this community to come forward to town meetings and invest their time. And, you know, I don't speak for everyone, but I do feel that I've spoken to some young people in this community. And yeah, it's, you know, at some point you got to ask yourself, like, with property values going through the roof. It's like, and with seemingly nothing being invested from the community in terms of like civic things like this broadband stuff, it's like, what are we investing in? What are we sticking around for? There's a lot of young people who I think that if we don't invest in things like this, 
we won't be here in five, 10 years. And so I think it really, we need to make this a priority, things like this. Okay, so now I'm going to speak. Um, so there, you, everyone's right, there are other options. So both Spectrum and Consolidated have presented options to us and Spectrum's offer is brand spanking. I believe it arrived the day of the public hearing and I have not read it yet. I don't know if Andy and Gabe, if you've had time to unpack it yet, but you know, those proposals would also still require tax dollars to be spent for them to build out the infrastructure and we would then still lose out on, you know, the local control is my basic understanding of it. At least, you know, we don't have, but, you know, when I got on the broadband committee, I said, I wanted, I wanted to be a member of the committee. So the question could be answered over time. And I made it very clear, I think the record's been very clear that right from the get go, I've had serious reservations about the project. And I was shocked by the survey results because it didn't match, you know, what I was generally hearing, both from young and old people. There's plenty of young people that have told me that, man, that is it. And they're much more tech savvy than I am, than I am. So I asked them, please tell me how very bad this could go. You know, and so, I would actually like to respond to the tech question. John, please. So the, we have so few subscribers. If we had 100% subscription rates and you have a major problem, you know, to be perfectly honest, the $5 million number, that's not what really scares me. Because first of all, it's not likely. And even if it was only two and a half, at least when you get that amount and you sign a bond agreement for 20 years, you know exactly what that amount is. Or that period of time, you can you can budget around that. The number that scares me is the yearly operating cost because you run into a problem before the project has developed enough time to develop a reserve fund. So, you know, in all honesty, no, I think it is time that you know, and there are other options. You know, now that U.S. cellular has better cell reception for a great part of the island, you can get, you know, their internet service. And Starlink is only getting better, and, and other satellite services. I'm like, I'm not. I shouldn't endorse any one company. You know, I don't think that's fair. But you know, there are other options that people can do on their own, and doesn't involve the town spending tax dollars doing it for them. So you know, I'm at the point now of saying that we shouldn't be spending staff time in the upcoming year. I understand that we did budget it, but that's just because it's been budgeted does not mean it needs to be spent. And, you know, we need to go into other projects or, you know, have money sitting in the general reserve at the end of the next fiscal year. Sometime, you know, June 22, when that one would end. I know, yeah. Hand up as well. Um, okay, I'm going to go back to John and then Gabe. Well, just with the tech thing, uh, so when the gentleman came out here beginning of the year last year and he discussed about the thousand megabits per second via fiber optic cable, and really that realistically peaks out at around 800, 850, um, that's still going to outpace anything that wireless can do just because of the technical limitations, like actual laws of physics. You're never going to be able to transmit information faster wirelessly than you are going to be through light, through a glass tube. So like Starlink and those ideas are great, but I personally think that, especially as a community that does have one of the darkest skies still on the coast, it's a little ironic that we'd be advocating for something that's going to go up there and pollute our night skies to the point where you can't take photos with like long exposure photos without massive streaks through. I know that that like okay, sounds fruity if you want to take nice photos. At the same time, it really affects observation stuff. Like that affects actual science that we actually do. And I think it's a little bit much to just sign stuff over to, you know, rich billionaires who don't think about this shit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so that really, it shows a certain degree of ignorance that this wireless solution is always presented when the actual technical limitations are such that it really is future-proof. 
unless you're going to send information through vacuum tubes, which would require infrastructure of such a futuristic kind that you don't have to worry about. Like this is, in for all intents and purposes, future proof as you can get. Okay, so I think we've heard, you know, a good spattering from the crowd. You know, more cool. Oh, I'm sorry, Gabe. <laughs> Thank you, Jake. Yeah, I just wanted, I just wanted to clarify, and Patrick did um, at the public hearing clarified for clarified this for us, and this isn't necessarily also a solution that the committee was in favor of, and uh, but just just to clarify around what consolidated and likely spectrum would be wanting is not that we um, pay for a bond through taxation. What they did on Long Island and Patrick pointed out at the hearing, um, this is also their model in New Hampshire, is what happens is they, they partner with the town to do a bond, but the fees that they charge for, sub, for subscribers is what pays for the bond. So it's not paid for, the infrastructure isn't paid for through taxation. So like on Long Island, for example, Long would get a municipal bond to um, fund the backbone. And then that bond would be guaranteed through a contract to be paid for by consolidated through their user fees. Now, Long is a very small island. They, they only have, um, they would only have consolidated, there's not competition, et cetera. But I just wanna point out that we, you know, likely, you know, we have always talked about those types of public private partnerships as not being things that we wanted to pursue because we didn't want uh, tax dollars to be invested into private um, companies. And, but just, just, just to be clear, there all are non-tax solutions to those public private partnerships. Yeah. You know, everything you said made sense, but none of it was a persuasive argument against further exploration into essentially the unknown, because there's so much about the eventual development of this whole business that we don't know anything about. And the notion that we would throw our hands up and say, uh, forget it at this point, it just strikes me as the wrong thing to do. I understand why we wouldn't go forward with this project in particular, but the notion that we wouldn't invest in further exploration of developments we can't even foresee at this point is not wanted. Not wanted. So, not wanted. I'm going to move the discussion with an actual motion, you know, which I probably should have done much earlier. We probably could have saved all, all of us going to save some time here, but I'm, I'm not going to move that the broadband committee be disbanded, but I am going to move that staff time spent um, facilitating the broadband committee not be used until um, the board of selectmen reauthorizes them to do so. Was there a second to that motion? Well, let's, oh, okay. Um, Second and then discuss. No, well, no, now actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the motion was that the broadband committee, you know, still exists, but that staff time, you know, will not be used, you know, until the board of selectmen, you know, reauthorizes that time at a later date. Votes to reauthorize. And it's been seconded by Pam. Now discussion. Okay. Um, I would put a time limit on that. I wouldn't say in the future. I think we, if we are going to vote to reinstate the committee, we need to have a timeline on that. I don't want to just go willy-nilly and say, yeah, we'll do it at some point. I'm, no. um, I'm not in favor of that motion either. Um, this committee hasn't wasted any money. They've done some great work, and the notion that they might continue to do great work and spend the money that's involved in staff time wisely is an appealing one, as far as I'm concerned. DW said that one of the reasons we shouldn't um, 
do this is because people aren't interested. Now, I understand they're not interested in what's been presented to them now, but developments, uh, so much about what is coming down the pike is unknown. I'm not willing to say they're never going to be interested in anything, so why move forward? I would say let this committee continue to investigate opportunities that are more likely to sail and meet the satisfaction than the last one did. What's the budget on that? Uh, I mean, there's always going to be something newer and better. How, how right. long are you going to make these people waste their time on committees if no one wants to do that? Well, I mean, that's, that's my point. Let's see, let's, let's see yeah, how that goes. People don't care about hiring entities out here. You're on your own for it. So there's no sense for us to waste any more time, town taxpayers' dollars on it. So let's move forward. So if, you know, right now, you know, in the budget proposal for the upcoming year, beginning July 1, it, we've, you know, tentatively allocated 100 staff hours. You know, 100 staff hours is a significant yeah, amount of time that, lot. you know, can go towards, uh, you know, a lot of other projects, in my opinion. Well, when you're talking about the housing committee, mm -hmm. next, I would think that that time could be more well spent up on that housing committee and Mary Terry get further ahead on that, which is a bigger priority to young people, I would think. Buying houses then is broadband, in my opinion, but that's I just how I feel. Keeps it, right? I think it goes a bit hand in hand, one and the other. It's a bit, you know, you kind of need both. Otherwise, what's the appeal? Okay, Ellen, I'm going to, you're going to be the last comment from the floor um, because I think we've discussed this, you know, Thank you for the Quite opportunity. Terrible. It just seems that a lot of people answered the survey, whether resident or non-resident, in favor of broadband island-wide. And because some people came to a public hearing and spoke against it, it seems unfair to so many people who answered the survey in a positive light to say that people aren't interested in it. I don't think it's fair. I think a lot of people are interested in it. If they've been at the hearing, they may, too, may also have felt that there were some reservations and and information that they hadn't known or considered before. But for some of you to say that people aren't interested in, I don't think is accurate. I think people are interested. I think we do want broadband island-wide. And I really do think the committee should be reauthorized with some town assistance to continue to look at alternatives. It's really important for the community, for, for the kids, for education, for telemedicine. It's important here. And I just hope you don't disband the committee and the, the committee's done so much work. They put their heart and soul into this. I just think they they deserve to continue. And okay, you know, I will let Janine speak because she was the chairman of the committee and she has spent so much time. So I couldn't possibly not give her, you know. Well, I just wanted to say a voice of reality here. If there is no staff time, there is no committee. Because the committee last some months is me and Gabe. We've been doing all the heavy lifting. The rest of the members of the, this committee are totally disengaged. Don't even come to Zoom meetings or respond to emails, asking for comments, nothing. So if the staff is gone, I'm gone. And it's done. Hmm. Okay, so I'm now going to call for a vote. Again, the uh, motion was to halt staff time uh, for the time being on the broadband committee. Do you, it, uh, do you have, do you have? Well, we, yeah, no. Yeah, I just didn't like the fact that we didn't have a time limit on them. I don't know if you want to, I, I think it's wise not to have a time limit, you know. So, all those in favor of that motion? Opposed? If that motion does pass, that means that staff time for the time being will not be used towards the broadband committee. And, you know, we, do, we won't have to make a formal motion not to have a referendum vote unless somebody wants to make that motion on the board. But obviously, if we don't make a motion to have a referendum vote, there's not going to be a referendum. Okay, thank you very much for your discussion, you know, and for keeping your comments concise, clear, polite. I know this is obviously a very contentious 
issue, but might as well take the committee out behind the shed and shoot it on the other side. Well, thank you, John. Uh, we'll go on to. We'll go on. Definite tabling. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Legitimate John, 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 John. You, this discussion that we are moving on now to the housing committee. Seems pretty chunky. Mm -hmm. What's that? I don't think I'd ever get to keep that. Uh, <laughs> housing committee. <laughs> So is this Matt to Dave or Matt? Matt? Um, yeah, yeah your, your board package uh, uh, will never be putting an update on the work that I've been doing. I went to the uh, housing committee and with Mary as well. Um, and we're at the stage where we're ready to kind of move forward with the, uh, with the assessment uh, as it's been submitted uh, by Mary. So the assessment will consist of uh, a, another community survey, or surveys, um, which will be targeted at year-round residents uh, on the island and just uh, collect some background information about them and also get some uh, information on what specific barriers they feel they face in terms of uh, getting access to sustainable, reliable, affordable, safe year-round housing. Yeah. So that'll be a survey portion, that'll be anonymous. And then there'll also be uh, a stakeholder uh, portion where Mary will be working, uh, looking to interview you know, influential community members like select board members or uh, a co-op, um, and also just community members in general, uh, going a bit deeper on some of their experience. Landlords as well. Um, and the, uh, the ultimate goal of this assessment to come out and report in the fall time that will be able to be presented to the board, and then the committee will be able to use the information in the report to uh, move forward with actually you know, addressing some of these problems that the community is facing. I feel everybody's in agreement that housing is a problem, but this will uh, help mm -hmm. to uh, help kind of define the issue in a bit more exactness. Yeah. And so you see in the board packet there the uh, a draft of the survey and then also a list of the, uh, the stakeholders. So, if you all have feedback, share. Do you need anything from us, like a motion mm -hmm. to go ahead with the survey? Is that what you're asking for? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, the only I've, I'll admit I've only looked at this very briefly, but under question number seven, obviously, Final Haven has a high percentage of self employed individuals. And there are two, there'll be two different types of income that might be worth. So question number seven asks, what was your household's pre-tax income last year? You know, maybe a better question would be, what is, you know, you might ask two questions. What is your gross? And then what is your net? You know, those ranges, you know, you know, obviously those are very different numbers. Pre-tax would be adjusted gross. But yeah, which I get, you know what, I suppose that is just fine now that I've Talk myself through that and, and they won't let me know what I'm right. <laughs> Does anyone else have any thoughts? Anything jumped up for them on the survey? No? I'm just glad to see this get off the ground. It's been a long mm -hmm. time in the kind of ho oh hum stage. You know, I'm really glad to see this getting off the ground. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, it'll be, uh, you'll be able to fill it out online and also on paper. Yeah, and we're not going to be sending a copy out for you every you know, address on Vinyl Haven. That's just far too expensive and uh, logistically. Uh, so, what are you doing? Just registered voters? Uh, not even the registered voters. So, we're going to have it uh, hopefully distributed around town. You can pick it up. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, like the on closet, a library, town office, um, and also. <laughs> With advertisements in the wind, and also hopefully they'll. So, you want to save the mail and tell us that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. I, I'm always for saving money, but I would worry that maybe you don't get a ton of responses that way. I said it's going to be online. Yeah. So okay. Oh, yeah. As long as we really blast, really blast that, you know, advertise that. I mean. yeah. uh, Dan? I have a question, please. Uh, you said you're trying to target your island residents, but then you added landlords. So, you do need to pick out people like me who is not an island resident but is a landlord on the island. I'm just going to get it because I'm going to volunteer to fill it out, or are you going to try to target no rental property owners and do we even know who those are? 
Yeah. yeah, that's what I was going to say. I'm betting we know that number. I haven't considered you as one then. So will I? Something new each day. So the survey is specifically for year round residents. As it should be. Yeah, and, and, I don't know. And the, the landlord portion would just be uh, hopefully um, having Mary speak with them one on one and uh, get a bit clearer of an idea of how they fit with the work. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Very much, you know, for getting this going. You know, I'm excited to. I see I'm a, you know, person that you want to interview. Yeah. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> um, I just like to tell you that Barb Hill would join the committee. Oh, um, that's excellent. Brought that meeting when he spoke so eloquently about mm -hmm. how we need affordable housing on the island. I called him cool. the next morning and invited him to participate. Well, that would take a motion by the board to. Is there a vacancy on the board right now? I, I'm not sure. I thought that we didn't need to be authorized by the board because none of us were sworn in, and I was told it wasn't necessary because we did form an official committee. Do we not? You're not. You don't sign an oath, but you are appointed by the board. Okay, so we're not. Oh, I guess I got confused because I always had to sign something. I, already. Yeah, we had to ask Darling too, and you don't sign an oath anymore for all the committees. It's only if the committee has voting, like the planning planning board is sworn in and. I can't remember what. Um, yeah, there's just a, a place for Barb on the committee, and she well, If if there is if there is a vacancy, I mean Barb, I'm all you know. There is a vacancy. You sure? Yeah. Okay. We'll put it on our next agenda to vote on it after we yeah. Right. Yeah. But I don't think. Yeah. I, I don't. No, know, I Barb. think that's yeah. Barb. Yeah. Thank Thank you, Barb. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. No, we'll be. I I'm not sure if there's a vacancy. There are people who are not showing up for meetings. If if I they are if they are right now with members. I can assure you there's. I will just let one of them go. <laughs> no, you so will, no, you, no, you will not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the board will. It said the board's going to have 10 people. Well, we, we, we always like to set odd numbers. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not going to be the same as it was last year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we, we always like to set odd numbers. Well, it's not going to be the same as it was last year. Yeah. Well, so, all right, let's go on to Rose Commissioner Barb. You will be on the next meeting's agenda. You can obviously still attend the any committee meetings and, you know, be like a part of that discussion. Road okay. Commissioner reports. Um, I apologize for not forwarding those. Um, got another one. I mean, usually they come in on Monday, so I just I apologize for not forwarding that. Um, generally focused on um, trying to move into the new building. Um, yeah, I think we've had a couple that have been out sick the last couple of days, but um, that's that's trying to be the main focus now that we've gotten the gravel roads to a point where they've been calcium chloride and graded at least once so far. Um, you know, at a point where that's what we can do. I know they've been helping with Luke as well, trying to move culverts to the location and stay ahead of him cutting pavement. Um, that's been the focus of what they've been doing so far. Dan and I need to meet and talk about um, the positions, uh, job descriptions, and to uh, figure out what to post going forward for the fourth position. Um, you know, we're supposed to meet later this week after we've both had more time to review what we currently have for descriptions and whether we need to modify any of those um, and how best to move forward with the department. Uh, yeah, he so he addressed the letter, the email to the board. Uh, I don't know if any of the board members had responded. I, 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 I didn't really know how to, to respond. I mean, I thought that was kind of the way that the one is the way you want it. Yeah. I didn't quite know how to respond either, and I thought that it would be an agenda tonight. Yeah. I suggested to him that the what he had brought up in the e and if you know if you you know if, you know we can't hear you talking is all I ask please hear yeah, you know too many voices at once. I had suggested to him that the um, the proposal or the decision as to what what we post or how we fill it would be between me and him, you know, and then not necessarily from from the board directly, um, you know, perhaps it's his and I opportunity to be able to figure out what's best to put forward. Um, so I'm not sure. We've talked about it, and I, th I think he on the same page. And again, we're meeting this week to talk about it further. Um, in the meantime, we're trying to find you know intermittent you know part time help at the very least um, to help fill out the, the fourth position um, until we make a posting. I know one of the concerns he had was you know I guess taking a step back to look at what what it is exactly we're hoping to see um, you know with you know with the job description with what we're hoping to see filled um, you know and, and whether or not the current budget and what we budgeted affords that type of uh, workmanship and, and experience or not. 
Um, so again, something that we're continuing to look at. Okay. Yeah. So there is no old business. We have two items on the new business. Um, two quick ones. The first one is for Five Star Street. So that's all the data. Right mm -hmm. uh, so with the Star Street one, um, make sure I got them right. I believe this one we are to exchange the payment for the, as we've done before, you know, it's kind of a condition upon payment um, or upon receipt of payment. Um, so I think that was the stipulation with that one that it's an escrow in that when they see the quick claim deed, they'll give us the payment. I move we sign the quick claim deed for five star street. Second by Jay Thompson. Justin, all those in favor. Okay, um, B, quick claim deed for our four or four Arcoa Lane. I move we sign the quick claim deed for four Arcoa Lane. Second. Second by Pam Allen. All those in favor. Money coming in to get the two left. Yeah. All right. Uh, so the just so you're aware, we're um, asking the court. I believe um, I get them all right. Sometime in mid July, we're looking for a court date on the ADK action um, that we're engaged in. Um, discussed in length earlier about the um, tax exempt status and abatement request updates. Um, those are um, all at varying uh, stages in the courts um, to be reviewed still. Um, latest update was that the Knox County Superior Court remanded the consideration, reconsideration of um, scientific and literary um, exempt status or, or qualifications back to the, our assessors. So Wes will be preparing um, another a third now um, decision on that. Um, should be on our radars to talk about strategic planning, um, following up on what you had worked on for a work plan last year, um, using some of those same, um, same general goals or objectives uh, to look at um, for FY22, um, once the budget's approved, uh, to look at work plans and to help set some, you know, some better deadlines or expectations on certain things. Um, so just something to be thinking about if you want to, I don't know if you want to have a separate workshop on that in July, um, did, dedicated solely for that purpose, or if you want to try and include it in a regular meeting. I don't know if that's, you know, necessary. I mean, I think we're all well versed in what, you know, the capital projects of the future are, and we can, you know, plan it for the work plan a meeting or even two meetings, but, you know, we don't really need to have, unless someone else disagrees with me on that, but I think that. We can have, you know, we're, if, if, we're, if we're not well versed on the capital project, then we all should be removed from office immediately. Yeah, for me, for, for me, it's far more than the capital projects. And in, in fact, actually, the capital projects, in terms of an annual work plan, are the least of my worries. Um, you know, it's the every, you know, the every, you know, the more general. Things you expect and want to see from committees and departments, and making sure that you know, we're meeting those goals, and that it's clear to the staff what the goals of the board are to be met, um, or they can continue to go along as they have always, and um, you know, just wait for feedback if there's something awry or wrong. I think that 
good luck with the beginning from October because I mean it's been quite good. You know, I think like I think every other game it's off state. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, the ambulance director's position, um, I may have mentioned uh, we had the interviews. We had asked one of the candidates to come to the island, um, you know, for to be able to meet with some of the, the volunteers to tour the facility, uh, look at the medical center. Um, we they met with the director up there. Um, we did not um, offer the position um, to that person. Um, so we're Pat, Mark and I are continuing to work on, you know, what it is we're hoping to see filled, you know, if we can't find it to be a, a position that kind of complements what Mark does on the fire side of things, um, you know, how else might it look? Um, and so we're we're continuing to be hopeful that we'll find something, um, but it, it hasn't hasn't yielded a lot of um, positive response yet. Um, on the capital projects, the um, the bridge, as you know, the guardrails were installed. Uh, um, the community took it upon themselves to open the bridge um, prior to um, our authorization, but that seems, I mean, it's fine. It's, it's open, it's able to go. Um, and they're gonna start, start dismantling the um, temporary road. I'm still trying to finalize um, how much material may, may be available um, for us um, out of that or how much may have been spoken for or sold elsewhere. Um, that was part of the, um, getting the price down to the point where it was off, you know, what, within what we authorized or had the authorization for was that a lot of that material was, you know, trucked here, but not purchased, if you will. So it wasn't ours. So that was one way to lower it. So if he anticipated selling it, that was one way that the material could get lowered. So the cost of the project would be lowered. Um, but we have a need for it while it's here. If it's, if, if it could stay here, you know, that's material that could be used on road projects on shoulder projects. Um, well, you said the boat ramp's going to be on the way up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, the boat launch up there will be restored um, to a better condition than it was. Oh, that's great. Um, the public works facility is still waiting on the uh, the electricians to be able to come back and finalize a few things. My understanding is they're short on staff, but also waiting on some uh, materials or components of, I think, the pump for the fuel station and a few other things. Um, but we have started moving stuff in, um, and the engineers coming out Friday to do I will walk through hopefully with someone from the company um, to point out any last minute things that they need to come back and deal with. Um, that is nearing nearing completion. Uh, mentioned that Commissioner Pullman had came, come out last week. Uh, she talked with Mark, Pat, and I. Um, just covered a wide wide range of generally projects and concerns we have on the island. Uh, is it related to things that the county might be able to spend the ARP funds on? Um, the commissioners had a meeting on Tuesday, um, talking in more detail about it, mostly hearing from um, two groups, Maine Housing Authority, as well as the Mid, uh, Mid Coast Broadband Coalition. Um, thanks, Matt. <laughs> and so both of those entities are hopeful that the county will consider their um, interests in helping solve some of the challenges in the Mid Coast. Um, there's been a lot of People reaching out to the county commissioners and, and the administrator on, you know, please use it here, please spend it there, you know, we need this too. Um, so it, there's no, there are no position to decide anything right now. It's you know same as we are. We're waiting for the same final ruling on how exactly what the limitations are and what how it can be spent exactly. It's still you know a lot more clarity, but still very um, not final at this point. So um, you know we will continue to work with them. The commissioner is interested in coming back again and to spend more time and to see more of our facilities. Um, presumably, if it works, to be able to meet with some of the board members. Um, she's happy to come to a board meeting. Um, so just something to think about um, as that time might allow for that. I've already gone over housing challenges. Let's make sure I didn't have a question in there. Negative. Um, Gabe had already talked about the grant funding. Just a um, big update there is that we did apply with Senator King's office um, for consideration for project funding um, with there as well. They had reached out to us to, to do so. And other than that, meeting for tomorrow with the um, North Haven Select Board at 515. Yeah, they have a regular meeting. They'll start at five and sign their warrants and take care of their regular business before. But 515, they said they we should be fine to join them. Um, How are we going to do this? Virtual. Just come in there, I guess, and do it on the air. Or if 
your choice. If you want to stay home and do it from home, or if you want to come in and be around um, the meeting hall, you can do that. <laughs> okay. Um, main main. What's that? Um, the main the main uh, topic for tomorrow just be talking about the thoroughfare use and infrastructure needs that are up there for both sides, um, and then any possible if you want to have any future discussions, anything that you might want to throw up there for anything in the future. I know Eric talked about the TIF before, and trying to talk to talk about that. Um, you know, perhaps other things. I know Mark and Pat have been talking about you know training with first responders and mutual aid response. Um, you name it, there's probably a few things that could be in the future talked about, but just leaving it kind What's of open. What's going on with the, I thought Paul was going to put something for us. Um, I was notified that it went in today. Oh. I had to have some repairs done to it before it went in. And yeah, Everett was in today and said he hooked it up himself. So it's there for the summer and presumably into September until the weather starts to turn to a point where, you know, it needs to be removed, but. <laughs> Which is the same policy. Right. Right. That's okay. all I got. So, with 40 members, I'll start off. So, I'll start off easy and then we'll get more simplified. A uh, couple easy points. Um, as visibility concerns, one at Tanner Place Bridge, if you're going up to the neck, there's a little bluff right, be right before you get on the bridge, and there's a tree growing on that bluff that, you know, does limit visibility, at, you know, at somewhat, you know, so you can see the hill. It's a small maple tree, I think. You know, if I could get it cut, cut down. Really on the, really on the little, town side of the, the bridge? Town, on the town side, yeah. Going up towards the I'm going on to grab my father's chainsaw. You did stop at the stop line that hasn't been painted quite yet, right? Of course. Okay. That's the intention. I stop, I stop at all stop signs. Uh, and also at the Coke bottle, if you're at the yield sign, looking up over the hill there, out towards State Beach, the grass has gotten tall enough that it's hard to see if a car is coming. I had to give it to her to get out in front of somebody the other day. In that triangle on the private yeah. property? Yeah. Like, you know, it's just, you know, I, I understand roadside mowing obviously will become a thing as the summer progresses, but this is just a real quick, up there with a weed whacker, essentially, you know. I can reach out to the caretaker of the property if oh, you'd like. Okay, go on. Or go up the town. It may be the town group. Is it, is it too far in, maybe? That's not that it's too far. Generally, we don't okay. generally yeah. go beyond the right of way, generally. Yeah. Okay. We put the rocks in there at one point so folks weren't driving vehicles, ATVs through that intersection, you know, going through the ditch and, you know, causing an issue with the ditch and drainage there. But beyond that, I think we may have cut down some trees in there in the yeah. past. Yeah, we know, yeah, because that used to be a huge. But yeah, right now it's just this grass. Yeah. Something's gonna be done, then great. I'll at least confirm with the caretaker that yeah. it'll be okay. <laughs> so now let's go. Speaking of that place up there, we have we now own that piece of property, obviously up by the some of that little graveyard there, mm -hmm. where the child care was thinking about. What right. do we want to do with that property? This is a more broader question, not, and not for a decision tonight, but. You know, we, we now have this piece of property, you know, that we took, you know, for back taxes, you know, do we want to put it on the market or do, unless somebody has a creative thought of what that land could be used for for public use. I don't, I'm not creative enough to think about that, but. You know, the, the only thing that would come to mind would be if you could find some kind of cheap house to put on it where, you know, an angel strike or a crop or something, but that would probably cost way too much money. Well, and I mean, that was and building needs to help out because of well, that was the reason that it wasn't going to work for the daycare is that you can put a septic or you can put a house, but you're not likely to put both in there because of the stream protection that runs through there. I think we want a slap for sale sign. Right? Mm. No. I mean, to do a for sale sign, like through you know, just we generally we, we put things out to bid and you know, through a closed bid process or sealed bid. Uh -huh. Do you want to do that and just see that's usually how we've done that? Otherwise, direction on whether you want to go with a real, I mean, I don't know that listing it's the thing to do. I think just a sealed bid. The Warren article gives the select board the ability to decide how you see fit. But, you know, with what it is, I think just a sealed bid on that would, would suffice. Yeah, I don't think it's even a full acre. Small. We can't build a house on it. Okay. So, I 
you know, the, you know, your best bet would be a, a no butter one to complete, you know, there. Yeah. That'd be your best bet. Mm -hmm. I said, put it up yeah. like close. We have to make a motion on that, put it up to close bid, and then set a date. Can we do that next thing, or can we do it now? Or you can make a motion now to put it out and off, you know, offer for sealed bids. And so what do we usually do, like a month or? Uh... Well, you'll meet. I mean, it's up to you. I mean, you can do two weeks and see what you get, and have the reservation. You can put a minimum on there if you want. What's the week after the twenty ninth? Um, after the twenty ninth would presumably be the thirteenth. maybe your last meeting, but first of all, I'd like to thank you for not just these last two terms on the board, but you know, you've know you been an active member of this community for a lot of years. So I want to thank you for your time thank you, and really. talent. And you know, you know, you've done a lot to elevate the conversation in the last six years, you know, on this board. Oh, second. Well, <laughs> so, but also on a practical level, when you can point that I co-chair, we'll be losing you and we'll need a new co-chair. And so if someone, you guys should be thinking about that and why will you think about that? As this is my final year and I am not running again. I will make that abundantly clear. If nominated, I will not run. If elected, I will not serve. I even know I couldn't stand in the Johnson, but, <laughs> um, you know, you so if- You not remember what the <laughs> <laughs> I've read enough history. Uh, if, you know, somebody else, I you want, to elect me as chair for another for the last year that I will take the position. But if somebody else wants to get their feet wet, you know, because there is there, trust me, there is a learning curve. My first few meetings were, were rough. You know, if somebody else wants to take the position for that final year, I would really not have a hard time <laughs> taking a more secondary role on this board. I would admit the so I am I am getting a little grumpy and a little. <laughs> But you know, just then, you know, and obviously that will be until July when we elect a new chair. But and co chair, but you know, just think about, right? think yeah. about it. Yeah. So, and that's all I have. That was way too much. <laughs> you had nothing. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> that's the first time he's added anything, right? Yeah. For a long time. I got a couple of things. One, uh, Noah Hall officially notified me and maybe all of us that he wouldn't be painting the fire hall this year. And I spoke to uh, uh, no, uh, I did speak to Donna, but no, I spoke to. Uh, <laughs> suffice to say, I spoke to them, <laughs> <laughs> and they said that they would uh, do it by uh, by this fall. And so I asked them to get back to us with a price mm -hmm. because now it would be a shame. It's a shame already to see it deteriorating, and there are some physical repairs that need to be made to minor repairs. So we can expect to hear from this person. Yeah. <laughs> you know, on the right, when you just go to the Granite Island. Dana Emmett. Yeah, Dana. I just said that. Thank you. No, I didn't. <laughs> all right, yeah, Dana. Oh, okay. And uh, the, did you all get the letter that I sent around? Oh, yeah. I agree with you. So are we on board with signing that? What is the, I didn't think I read it entirely, but what's the call for? What's the call or what's it asking? It was about the, it was about uh, reverting to the old standby system. Actually, I did have one change. If you go back to that system, the only change I would say is don't give out unlimited standby fares. So give out a number that you think can actually right. fill it. Because if, if everyone has a standby, then what's the point of the system? Uh, I agree. And so do the other people who are on board with that, but that didn't prove that. But other than that, yeah. If this was under your um, fair advisory, or no, what is it? The committee? The fair advisor committee? You yeah. know, no, it's not. It has nothing to do with that. It's just you personally. No, it was me and, and several other people. Uh, I read the email and I responded to it, but I didn't know. 
I'm like you, I can't remember who it. <laughs> uh, it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with the Ferry Advisory Committee, okay. either the local one or the state. Okay, one. that's what I was trying to But get. I intend to bring it to the state uh, Ferry Advisory Board meeting. Mm -hmm. Right. Does it um, perhaps does it acknowledge the uh, ferry services concerns for the staff going yeah. beyond? Okay, yeah. 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 I saw it. I tried to get into the Google Doc. I don't know if I had access yet. Um, yeah, that was, I, but I did. I did see the email. I'm not sure if I fully read. No, where the uh, I move that we sign the letter with the edit about you know. Suggesting, suggesting a limit of standby this year per day, per, per, day. per day, really. Or, yeah, yeah, whatever it is. Per day. Per day. Second. Second of the DW session. All those in favor. We don't want to spend. Hmm? Hmm? Oh. Don't find a number you want to spend on Oh, no, I mean, I just, you know, oh, leave that up to them. The way we had it drafted initially was let the ferry. Terminal people who are more familiar with how many standby, right? Seven of them, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I, just, I, I, would, I wouldn't know. I didn't know if we wanted to try and send no, them I, all the letter. They, they would, they would have the better idea of what that is. Yeah. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. in favor of some of them. Okay. I just have one question about the airport. Is there been any more about? I mean, where do we go? What do we do from our last discussion? Um, well, I mean, we need funds to, you know, really go after it and to try and expand it. Um, you know, frankly, with, I just haven't had the time to put towards it. Um, it's just one of those things that's out there and they haven't pushed for it to be expanded in the last two year now. So um, it has to keep, you know, it's on the list, but I haven't been able to make it a priority. But, I just had somebody ask about Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd like to see it be a priority. I, I would like us to come up with the work planning to make sure we can see where it fits in and that that's part of my challenge is to making sure that we have time to do that. Okay, anything else on the board member? I would just like to get back to what Jim was talking about earlier. I mean, oh. I've called about things and never we never get calls back from Knox County. Mm -hmm. I, I realize that they might not be here on certain days, but they're, there's resources for them to get out here when it's happening in the daylight hours. It doesn't make sense to one, if you give your name and phone number from at least the officer on duty not to call you back or someone on duty. And two, for them to send someone out here, I mean, that's a pretty hard corner when you got, I mean, I totally agree with Jim. I It's disgusting to see the road all torn up up there when, yeah. especially after they just paved it. Um, I'm just as sick as Jim about all that, all that stuff going on up there, and and speeding. I mean, I've heard from a lot of people. It's not just up the Pequot Road with mm -hmm. people speeding. And like Jim said, there are certain people that have probably been complained on that the cops should maybe. I mean, I don't know how we cannot catch one of them. One right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's just a handful of people on that road that's speeding. I mean. On a regular basis, I know them all. I know who they are. But I, I appreciate you commenting, Jake. And uh, to me, it's a, it's a pretty important issue. So I, is I really issue. hope you guys. I just I know you've got a lot on your plate, but I really hope that you jog this around your mind, and maybe somebody will come up with some, some way to kind of curb this a little bit, because it, you know, uh, it. it it's got out of control. I have a question, Jim. Yes. So how when do you notice that this happening? Is it when the when the deputy is off island? Well, you know, I it's like I don't really know when he's here and when he ain't here per <laughs> se, but I assume that's probably happening a lot when he ain't here. But there's been times where I've seen a cop walk by my house and five minutes later there's a car coming down the road doing 999 miles an hour. I mean, I told I, one of the cops a while back, I said, look, you know, you can set my damn drive. You can set my driveway. I can tell you when these people are coming through. I says, you'll have them. They're doing 70 miles an hour. 
I, I think he sat there one time, but he didn't get anybody. But to me, it wouldn't be that hard to do because there's three to four people that drive like hell. How recently did you sit in your driveway? Oh, this was a while back now, Bill, months ago. No, but it wasn't the current deputy that we have. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was, it was like three, three people back. But okay. he actually did set in my drive. I said, you can back right up my driveway yeah. and set right there. I says, they'll be coming along at about this time. And one of the guys, he's a fisherman. He comes down through there about five o'clock every morning. I don't even have to look out the window. I know who it is. And coming home in the afternoon, he's still doing, you know, he's doing all of 50. If he's doing a mile. But I'd really, really like to see the traffic get. Well, I'm all I'm all with it. I was just gonna ask Andy if there's any word. Have they had any movement on the second that out here or um so I'd um, it came up in a so I reached out today to the captain following yesterday's inquiry about whether there was a deputy out on the island um, and to see what kind of follow up there was. So it was I don't know if you see the the Knox County report that came out again today. So there was there was a motor vehicle complaint logged in there. Um, so I did it was a deputy from the mainland that it was assigned to, and um, so I did call to see what the disposition or what the follow up on that was, um, you know, and did express that you know this is another one's opportunity. You know, I don't know one of those um, times where you know we're told we're part of zone one. If the deputy isn't our, the resident deputy filling the film that time isn't here, that we're part of zone one, there'll be a response. Um, you know, presumably it, it, it has to get sergeant approval, and so they have to weigh with other calls going on. Are there other, is there a reason to be able to send it out now? Is there a imminent danger or threat? And so, at the very least, you would expect a phone call to verify what what was seen. Um, when was the last time you called and nobody responded to it? Yesterday. So, expressing that with the captain, I don't expect it to stop there, but, you know, I have inquired about last night in particular um, and did follow up with another deputy today. Um, I was on the island. Um, um, but what, what I just say, but I mean, the video posted on social media of them, you know, I, I, I just saved the video. And speaking, speaking of unregistered, you know, vehicle, you know, I could tell yes, I could tell you who the vehicle is. If it could be proved in court, that'd be another thing, obviously. But I but now the video is saved. I know who posted it. We can I have no problem handing that over to or handing it to Andy to hand over to the deputy. But you know, that would be a first step is that you know at least he can go up and and the thing of it is, uh, you know, somebody said, well, what the hell are you concerned about what the black is doing? It's on your own property. I said, no, it's not, not on the property. It is on the town paved road. They yeah. are they are staving up a town paved road. They're also parking in the road too. They're people, parking. People have to go around it all the time. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I had to literally stop. There yeah. was so much smoke, and there was a truck ahead of me, and it was just, I mean, it was just loud. And so I mean, anything in anything to kind of curb it would be really good. And I've got two grandkids. I've got one that's 13, 15. They like to ride the bike to school. And I don't want to get a call that one of them kids has been hit by some halfway that's going three times faster than he should be. Right. And I don't want to go down that road. No, no none of us do. Well, thank you. I mean, thanks, Jim. Yeah, thank you. I lost a son 33 years ago. He got hit by a car. He would be 45 years old now. And, uh, you know, I still have bad days about that. I think about that quite often. She was, she was actually riding a bicycle. And I think about that with my grandkids, you know, and I think that, God, you know, I mean, I don't want something like this to happen to them. So, uh, well, let's I, know it's on our, yeah, I mean, we're not, we're not, not you know, brushing it off, you know. And I don't want to get in a mess because, they, you know, I, I can take care of myself if I have to, and I can be through the situation, but, and the bottom line is, if I do it on my own, I'm the one that's going to be getting in trouble. That's right. And then punks are still going to be outraged and hell. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But, but thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, for All right. Thank um, you. The same subject. Last night, uh, all day yesterday, everybody knew about the anniversary and they knew things were going to take. Was there a deputy on the island last night? No. 
even know advanced warning knowing that they were going to be doing this i don't i don't think uh no, i don't think north county i don't think it crossed their mind that this is a one-year anniversary of that event maybe on facebook and the sheriff's department is on facebook I see him posting pictures on there every day of who's removed to a lieutenant and who's doing this and who's doing that. They're seeing what's on the paper. Okay. I can tell you that on those three or four days every week when the deputy has been here, the noise and the reckless driving and has been significantly diminished and it picks up just as soon as this car is parked at the ferry terminal. Okay. So, my point being, when there's a deputy here, things are better. Mm -hmm. so you need two deputies. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately yeah. we can't make one the territory. That's, that's right. probably we are. That's what we're facing. Yeah. yeah. Be any way to stagger their um, shifts or the his shift, and maybe have the car left down there when he's not gone. Yeah, yeah we talked, talked about, about that. that. Yeah. I talked to him about leaving the car right at the cottage where he was renting, and uh, I'll give him a ride. Down no, but well, I think what. Patrick is saying, have him leave the car at the ferry so everyone thinks he's actually gone. Right. Yeah, but he can actually island. be on the island mm -hmm. somewhere ready we to catch both those things. Yeah, we've like talked that. we've talked about that at our meeting. We suggested yeah. all yeah. these things. Right. You know what I just want to say about your like these people aren't even smart enough to do it down the road. So it looks like it's in front of somebody else's house. Right. right. So that's yeah. what you're dealing with mentality wise. So I mean yeah. I was and, and yeah. what people are dealing with is, well, in my opinion, he's an idiot. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he's a half. Right. Right. Is, there, is there anything else on the report members? No. No. Right. I move we adjourn. Second. Second. Seconded by Donald Poole. All those in favor. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.